Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at big commerce. We're going to be looking at talking about big commerce options versus modifiers. What they are, how they work, and how you load them. We won't go into all the details on how to load them. We can handle that separately, but we want you to really understand the difference between them. So we're going to start out if we're looking in our big commerce control panel here, we go into our products and we're going to pick a product. Now in editing the product, there's an area down here for product options and there's both the variations and customizations. Okay, so now this is where this kicks in. Variations use options. Okay, options are things like size and color. When you set options on an item, they will create variations and they create a variation for every kind of permutation of your options. So let's say you have three sizes and three colors that will create nine permutations, therefore nine variations. So now when you do this, the key thing is why would you use an option and create a variant? It's because you need distinct SKUs is primarily the first reason. The second are images. Now you can control a lot of things on a per option level. You can make them purchasable, not purchasable. You can change the price, stock level, things like this on options, which create variants. And that's a great thing. And it's often why you do it. So let's go in and let's look at these real quick. And then we're going to go talk about modifiers and what differs from modifiers. You know, when you're creating options, you can go in here to configure options. In this case, we've already got a pack size in here. You can tell it what type. It can be a swatch. It can be radio buttons, a rectangle list, or a drop down. And then you put in your values. If let's say we want to add some more options, we can say add another variant option in here. And let's just say this is color. And we want it to be a little bit of rectangle and it fills in with red, green, and blue. We'll use that. You can set a default if you wanted a default chosen. And we'll save that. And now you'll see down here, it has created variants for every pack size for every color. And you can go in, if I wanted to load a name or an image on there, I can do that. I can change the SKU, I can change the price. There's actually even other columns that you can show that you can modify on a variant level. Now, often when bringing data in, creating a product, there are times you need things that do not create a distinct SKU, do not need a distinct image. These are things like add-ons to products or changes to products that are configuring the base product. Those would go under customizations and these are known as modifiers. Modifiers, when you go in, you can do the same thing. You can create a modifier, but let's say it's include insurance. We can make it a checkbox. And that doesn't create any kind of variant. And then what you do is for the modifiers, you can add rules to them if that modifier selection changes things such as the price. So let's take our insurance one and let's say if you check it, it's going to add $10 to the price. You can choose other choices. You can choose by percentage how it modifies or it can actually reduce from the price. And you can also have it adjust weight as well. But we'll just put that in. And so now what we've done is there will be a checkbox on the page that automatically will add $10 to the price when selected. Now, other than variants allowing you to have distinct SKUs, the other thing to remember when creating products is there are limitations. Variants have a limit of 600 variants allowed per product. That's a lot. Not a lot of stores run into that, but some do. If you're getting close to that, see if you can avoid that and make some of those be modifiers instead of options. So this will solve a lot of problem. The other nice thing on modifiers, besides the fact that I can configure rules for the pricing rather than having to manually change all of the variant prices when prices change, you can also go in and there are more choices for types of variants, date fields, text fields, uploads, there is 
the standard choices you see with options, there is also a pick list. This is used for, I want an add-on product. When I choose this, it's gonna go and take one of these items and now add that. So you're basically buying two products with one click. We have some choices here for price and inventory and all of these things. But there's a lot more choices with modifiers than there are with options. Now, that's enough for a basic difference. So variants created by options give you distinct SKUs and images and purchasability options. Modifiers don't affect SKU, don't affect the image, don't affect purchasability, but they can still impact price and have a lot more customizations and they have no limits. There's no 600,000, there is no limit. You can create 20 modifier choices and then another set of 20 modifier choices and then another set of 20 modifier choices, no problem whatsoever. Now, one thing I will mention briefly, if you are loading data and it is very standardized, you always use the same colors, you always use the same sizes, or you use always the same modifiers, Big Commerce has an option over here. If you go in the side under products, you go to product options, now when I go in here, I can create shared options and shared modifiers. So when I'm creating a product, I can easily pick that existing shared modifier or shared option rather than creating it new. So in this case, we've got a shirt color choices in here. I'll edit it so you can see what that looks like. And you can drag them around, you can change the text on them. We're gonna close that out. So if I went back to my product here and I wanted to do it, I could go down to product options, configure options and add shared variant options and choose shirt color choices. Bam, it's automatically there. You'll see I cannot edit it on this item anymore because it's coming from that shared set. But the nice part is later on, if your vendor changes you can go and change the shared modifier and don't have to change all the individual products. The downside is you don't have the ability to change the individual products. So you just wanna make sure to weigh the pros and cons of each. So if I save that, you'll see now we have a one pound bag green, a one pound bag red, a 10 pound case green, and so forth. So hopefully this helps, explains a little bit more about product options, product modifiers, and what they can do, and when you would want to use one or the other. Thank you very much for watching.